know when you came to this place to do this evening, this afternoon, but I have come to worship God. I've come to bless His holy name. And you know, I have been, I've known about Harvest Fellowship for a long time. I was saying to somebody, Pastor, um, uh, um, our senior pastor and I have been, we've been on a journey for, for a while. I've known that for some time. And I, I know that God has been doing great and mighty things. Yes. And as I, as I thought about, can you just stay on the seashell for me so I don't lose the key? As I thought about everything that God is doing, I see that God has made a way. Yes. Hallelujah. I see that when the enemy wanted it to be over, God made a way for this church. God made a way for not just Pastor Morola, but for everybody that is at his name with this church. Hallelujah. And I know that God has made a way for you. That's why you're standing. Hallelujah.
are usually saying, if you know how to think, you know how to act. Only people who don't know how to think, who don't know how to thank God. Hallelujah. A few days ago, my immediate younger sister lived in Nigeria. Everything was going okay, but all of a sudden she had this pain in the stomach. And they went from one hospital to the other, to the other, to the other. And this is going to be very funny. And, and in, in about four or five days, she couldn't pass out any pieces. And she couldn't even part. And what all everybody was waiting for was for her to give her part. Yeah. Something as simple as that. And it wasn't coming. And because of that, she had to go into surgery. Yes. But God made her way. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation that the devil is back to you? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. And you look around and you were asking yourself, how am I going to get out of this? He made a way. He made a way. He even made a way. Yeah. 
you bear me with you. These were not the songs I sent to you. These were not the songs that I sent him. It was just today, as we walked around, God brought those songs to my spirit because they were necessary, or they are necessary for the journey that God has taken in this church. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for his love, if it wasn't for his grace, I don't know what the story would have been. Hallelujah. Since Pastor Dave wants to take the mic for me, the last thing, the last thing I want to say for now, I just want to say, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing.
very special gathering of praise all time of our God. Amen. I know you're sweating, but you know that it's called special anointing. Amen. Amen. We are excited the morning. By the time we are returning this place, we are going to go. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I said, uh, I used to say this uh, when I brought up coming to you. Just imagine that the person sitting next to you is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you want to greet the person. Can you just greet the person for me? The person, very important person sitting next to you. Imagine the person is Jesus. How excited are you going to be? <laughs> How excited will you be seeing Jesus? I will not see you. Amen. 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 So quickly, just a number of protocols. A number of protocols. Um, please, if you need water, they are sitting or uh, table behind you. Just when you move to the back, it's going to be to your own raft. But by my own left at the back, there's water there. You can just grab a bottle of water and just cool down. Uh, in terms of our conveniences, if you also go by the door to my left at the back, that leads to the gents. Spend this minute. We need to pop in and pop out as we go into the service. I just want to do a number of recognitions and I want you to please help me to celebrate this group of people. We have in our midst a friend of the house from the community, uh, from the group, Dada Stewart, and a friend sitting at the back there. Dada, just pray to Jesus. The Lord will celebrate and celebrate that. Yeah, you know, this is the Church of All Nations, so next time you are visiting us, you are not a guest, remember. Celebrate them one more time. I'm not very good with names, but broken, I won't forget to name again. <laughs> we have a list, a friend of the house, she's going to be speaking to us later today. Please help me to celebrate the presence of Jackie White and the Lord of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Yeah. Um, we have a, a sister church in the house. Very first. I want to shout for our sister to all changes. John Bruce Church. Hallelujah. Amen. And I must recognize here Pastor Femo. I call him Pastor Femo. Pastor Femo and Pastor Flo. Come on. You can see you. You can see you. Bye. 
Zaiten, a family of RCG Alex Solutions and Zaiten, with all the guests, the loudest, the loudest. We celebrate all of you, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I must recognize and give respect to one of our senior pastors at the wife, Pastor Bjorn and Joke Olai Tom.
this past twenty years we can look back and we can say of a certainty that it has been the God that has helped us. The Bible of the Lord has been in the help of man. We acknowledge that God, without you, we couldn't have come this far. We will find all the glory to you. We need to go with the one who we need to pray. We ask that God, even as I don't know what is to do, God, we don't want it. Let it be Mr. Hyde to be here as and let your name be the Lord be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll try and keep it short and simple. Uh, just please, if you don't mind, please let's go back to our team for, for these 20 years of pandemic. In Psalm 75 and verse 1. Psalm 75 and verse 1. Psalm 75 and verse 1. This, this is this is David speaking. He says, Unto thee, O God, we will give thanks. Unto thee we will give thanks. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works the world. You know, it's very important for us to understand how David started this psalm. He was very specific. And why was David very specific? Because I, I, I believe also this was also the same thing that was happening at his own very time. We live in a world where people are proud and arrogant to attribute their success, their progress, their advancement in life to themselves. So you see David starting this it says, unto thee, not unto a man, it says, unto thee do we give thanks. You hear some people say, you can tell you sometimes that they are, they are self-made. So when you begin to tell them the importance of giving thanks to God, they tell you that, that after all, that their success was as a result of their hard work. That their success was as a result of their wisdom, that their success was as a result of the people that they know in power. But if we are ever going to keep enjoying the benefits of God as his children, we must at every point in time never forget to return the glory to God. The Bible tells us a story about a man, I think it was in Daniel chapter 4, called the Book of Desert. The man had conquered the city, built the city. And the Bible says one day he was walking in his palace. He began to admire the city, admire the palace. And he said, is this not this great Babylon that I have built by my power? The Bible says, why the gods were still in his mouth? God said to him, he said, look, I'm taking away this power from you. And that you're going to be living with animals for seven seasons. And that was how the man was living into the forest for seven years because of not attributing his success, not attributing his progress to God. He says, is, God, is this not this great Babylon that I built by my hand? And God said, because you said that, because you didn't give glory to me, you are going to be in the forest for seven years. And after seven years, the Bible says, senses returned to him. And the man began to change his speech and say, I now understand that look, that power belongs to God. He gives it to whomever he gives. You know, as we, as we thank God these past 20 years for how far he has brought us, it is very important for each and every one of us not to forget that the reason why we are gathered here is because of God. It's not because of any man. It was John that was speaking, I think in John chapter 15, verse 5, if I am correct. Jesus speaking, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He says, if you abide in me and I in you, he says, you shall bear forth much fruit. And he went further to say, for without me, you can.
can do nothing. Brothers and sisters, we must, we must, we must honestly get this into our heads that look, it doesn't matter how wise you are, it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, it doesn't matter how powerful you are, it doesn't matter how strong you are. A man can receive nothing except it given to him from above. Never attribute your success in life to your wisdom. Thank God that God blessed you with wisdom. Never ad attribute your success in life to your strength. Thank God that God gave you strength. Never attribute your success in life for your intelligence. We are not, we are not, we are not downplaying your intelligence for whatsoever. But we want to tell you that look, a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from our home. We must get this at the back of our mind. And when you begin to, when you begin to live this kind of life, I can guarantee you that you will never, you will never stop enjoying the faithfulness of God every single day. That's why Jeremiah 13 verse 19 says, he says, he says, he says something, he says, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. He said, when that happens, he says, I will multiply them. They will not be few. I will also glorify them, and they will not be small. We must acknowledge God at every stage of our lives that it is Him that has brought us this far. Because without Him, we can do absolutely nothing. That's why the Bible says, some may trust in the horses. There are some people that will trust in chariots, but as for us, we will remember the name of the Lord, because we know that it is, it is in Him that we live and move and have our being. I acknowledge that without Him I can do nothing. No wonder when you read Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23, if I am correct, the Bible said something. It said, let not the wise man, let him not glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man, let him not glory in his might. Let the rich man not glory in his riches. He says, let him that glory, glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth the Lord. If we must never glory in life, we must come to the point where every single day we go on our knees unashamed, irrespective of who is watching you, acknowledging the faithfulness of God in your life. You know, recently God changed my mindset. I stumbled into into, into something that, you know, made me to acknowledge the faithfulness of God every single day. And I, I stumbled into this, and I came to understand that every single day, for some of us here, we will already be aware, every single day, 150,000 die daily. 150,000 people, not a month. Not a week, every single day, globally, 150,000 people die. I had the privilege of ministering somewhere last week, Sunday, in somebody's 60th birthday, and I began to share this to them, for them to understand the importance of Thanksgiving. I said, we are gathered today celebrating somebody's 60th birthday, and I said to them, do you know, this 60th day that we are celebrating, if 150 people are dying daily, do you know multiply it by 60, 60, 60 years? About 3 billion people have died. And she's not one of them. You are not one of them. I am not one of them. Amen. It, 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 enough reason for us to give God thanks. That God can single you out and show you mercy. That God can single you out and show you mercy. Friends, as we as we gather, gather this evening, rejoicing with Harvest Fellowship Church, we must understand that look, these 20 years have been because of the faithfulness of God. Harvest Fellowship survived 20 years, not because of any man. Thank God for the men that God brought across our way.
Thank God for the pillars that God has been using to support the church. But we must always acknowledge that, look, it is God. It is God that moves people to God. And that's why we must always channel our thanksgiving to the source and not to men. When you, when you, when, honestly, when you understand this, when you understand this, you will never stop seeing the hand and the finger of God upon your life. We are not complaining the men that God has sent our way to help us, to support us in this work, as pillars holding our hands. But we must always return the glory to God. God is the helper of men. It was the psalmist that looked up. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. He said, Whence will my help come from? He said, It can only come from the one that has made the heavens and the earth. Unto thee, O Lord, do we give thanks. Not unto men. We thank people. We acknowledge and appreciate them for all that they are doing in advancing the kingdom of God. But we are not ignorant to return the glory to God. Yes. And let the Lord know that, Lord, we've come this far. These 20 years have been because, because you stood by us. Yes. These 20 years have been because you brought the men. Yes. Remember, the Bible tells us something. He says, no man can come except the Lord draws him. Yes. So that they came was because you know, I tell myself this every single day, thank God for all the effort that we make. We pray, thank God that we are praying. God sent people our way. We do flyers to invite people. Thank God for the flyers. We are current members, invite people to church. Thank God for all those things. But when you understand that, look, it is God that draws people to himself, then you know that, look, you can't fail but return the glory to Him. It is unto God that we give thanks. It is unto God that we give thanks. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from above. In Acts chapter 12, beginning from verse 21, the Bible told us about a man called Herod, made a powerful speech. And people were so amazed by what this man said. He said, this can never be the voice of, of man. This can only be the voice of God. And the man, the man, instead of acknowledging, you know, and this is how many of us feel the test that God brings our way. Instead of going down on his knees and saying, look, even though people are appreciating me, I know that, look, that I spoke this world wasn't because of anything. It wasn't because I am an intelligent man. It's simply because you helped me. The man became proud, and that's how so many of us are. The Bible says, why the words were still in his mouth? The angel came and smote him. Why? The Bible says, because he refused to give glory to God. We must always keep acknowledging God at every stage of our life. At every stage of your life, never stop acknowledging him for his faithfulness. If there are one people thanking you, the more you keep thanking him, the more he gives you give them. It's not your effort that brought them. It is not the strategy that we adopted that project. It is God. As business people, this is our mindset. As students, this is our mindset. I remember one time that I was in the university. A guy, in fact, when you compare yourself to, the, to, 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 to that guy, you would think that you are not serious to them. Because from class straight to the straight to the library. And sometimes you look at him and you feel that you are on zero. You are working hard. But comparing your hard work to the guy, you just think that you are not serious to them. But after said and done, at the end, this same guy, that's when I knew that look, God is the helper of men. It was, the, it was Solomon that came and said, look, I returned that I saw something on that soul. That the race is not to the spirit. The battle is not to the strong. These are the things that we understand. And you can unashamedly go on your knees. And people are wondering, ah, ah, 
Say, no, I know, I know the source of my strength. I know the source of my progress. I know the source of my advancement. That's why I'm not ashamed. In all your respect of his body, your, your knees returning the glory to God. And God is saying, my son, you understand. My daughter, you understand. You know that a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from my God. As we join Harvest Fellowship to celebrate these 20 years, it's also something for each and every one of us to consider. How much of God do you acknowledge in your life? Do you attribute your success in life to your strength, to your intelligence, to your wisdom, to your hard work? No, it's because I worked so hard. It's because I did this, I did that. That's why I can see this level of success. There are people more hardworking than you. There are people more hardworking than I. Let's, let's, let's tell ourselves the truth. There are people, when you see how hardworking they are, you think that you have not started. But yet, when you measure your success to their success, you can only acknowledge that you. It's just God. And that's why we give Him praise. And that's why we give Him glory. As we celebrate this 20 years, we are just saying to everyone, unashamedly, it is God that has brought us this far. It is God. For without Him, we can do nothing. Without Him, without God, we can do absolutely nothing. God is the helper of men. And as you keep acknowledging God in your life, you will not stop seeing the wonders of God. As you keep acknowledging Him every single day you wake up, He helped you. You are on your knees, lifting up your hands, praising Him, and say, Father, thank you for this level that you have brought me. The truth is that you keep scaling new heights every single day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the mighty man not glory in his might. Let the strong man, let him not glory in his strength. If we must glory, we must acknowledge, we must understand, we must know that it is God that has brought us this far. As we join Harvest Fellowship celebrating these 20 years, every single one of us here, I pray that you will not stop seeing the wonders of God in your life. I say you will not stop seeing the wonders of God in your life. I say you will not stop seeing the wonders of God in your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For out of them shall proceed ten people. And out of them shall proceed the voice of them that make merry. I pray that everything that you lay your hands upon to do God will multiply. Everything that you lay your hands upon to do God will glorify. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The list that you wear before you enter here will be the list you will ever be in life. It will be from one level of glory to another. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you keep acknowledging the faithfulness of God in your life, you will never stop seeing the wonders of God in your own life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So we give God the praise and we give God the glory. And we return all the glory. I will never stop this song. You know, my father used to sing it every morning when we wake up to do our morning devotion. And he has lived with me every single day of my life. He said, praise God to whom all blessings come. Blessings do not come from any man. Thank God for the men that God has positioned around us. But let's acknowledge that too. every blessing, every blessing comes from our, comes from our good. Please, if you are living here this night, Never forget this thing that all blessings come from God. All, all blessings, they come from God. And men are just channels that God uses to distribute those blessings. All blessings come from God to men, through men, and to men. And when you acknowledge God as the source of the blessing, you will keep seeing wonders in your life. Amen. And I pray for Harvest Fellowship Church that. Their better years are ahead of them. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I say their better years are ahead of them. Amen. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We give you, we give God the praise. Yes. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you. We give you praise. We have returned again to say thank you for this past 20 years. We know that Lord, it is you that has brought us this far. It is you that has brought us this far. We acknowledge your hands upon this church. We acknowledge you, God, your mighty hands upon our mom. Thank you for helping her these 20 years. Standing by her, raising, Lord, pillars to support this work. Father, we say, accept our thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus. On this day, Father, that Lord, we are rejoicing of 20 years of your faithfulness, of 20 years of your mercy, of 20 years of your kindness, of 20 years of your love. Father, may Harvard Christian Church never stop seeing wonders in, in their own life. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May they never stop seeing the mighty hand of God upon their life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask that Lord for them it will be from glory to glory. For them it will be from strength to strength. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask that Father your hand will never stop upon this church. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you and we give you the glory. Blessed be your name O God. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Amen.
Welcome, what's here to our list? What's in the crown? We love you, God bless you, and the new year. Right now, I will invite you, our senior pastor, to come to the mic. We want to launch a new ministry. We have to see the other church. Right at you. Yeah. 
It's a football academy. And the idea is that we want to bring something into rugby or bring something out from our church. Where we will take young people away from the streets. We want to take them off the streets and engage them in some activity that's going to help them meet them to Christ. Remember now, it's coming from our church. But we're not saying everybody can do it. Any child from the age of 10, 10 to 16, 10 to 16 years old. So we'll put this out there. We expect children that are not from Christian homes to join. What we intend to do is to shine the light of Christ in the way that our children relate with them and, and pray for them. We invite them to church. On the days that they're doing, they really come to church to get their cup. Yeah. Yeah. We'll sponsor some cups that will be harvest fellowship sponsored uh, uh, thing. Yeah, I certainly get it too. Praise the Lord. I'm glad loads of people get it. I don't know what all the negative is. Praise God. But you know, I believe this is God given. Because you know, if we can take the children, I don't know, I don't know where he's going, he was sleeping with sleep with me. If we can get the children before they develop that criminal mindset off the street, if we can get them before gangs get them, if we can get them before bad influences get them, then we can influence them with Christ and show them that you can have this kind of hair, but you don't have to be a gangster.
some displays of the version, which is talking a bit too easy on that one. And then um, uh, active black country. Um, so I cover three three areas. I um, I've been doing this for over a year, and it has really, really got my got right inside there, you know. Because I really do feel like I'm helping with these not-for-profit sports and organised sports organisations to raise them. You know, they use that stick way, you know. Um, not not for just oh, let's run a grand conversation and do this boring, lengthy, lengthy application form that is just like oh, can you give me some money? Instead, it's bringing communities together um, by reaching out to your firstly your close community, yeah, to ask them for not just their money but for their help in um, their helping organising, helping organising, helping to.
towards creating this great campaign. And of course, if you can head towards the campaign of the civil women, that will be absolutely awesome. Jesus name. Also, 
to pray for those projects that this project will not fail. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord will bless this project to favor in the name of Jesus. Lord, every contact, every resources that is required to achieve success concerning this project, we pray from heaven that you will release those resources in Jesus' name. Amen. For these your two songs, we ask for ideas. Yes, we ask for understanding. Yes, we ask for good vision. Amen. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you will back them up in the name of Jesus. Yes. Peace we are actually established today. Yes. Let it be established in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Through this project, Father, we pray, you will draw souls to your kingdom. Amen. Lord, you will bring lights to every dark area in rugby. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we we'll pray. But 
the message remains the same. And I'm so pleased that Ola eventually is moving into football. Because you've got a man's team, but Ola's going to run the women's team. Yes! Hey, we're a new day. It's a new space. It's a new place. And this gospel is the power of God to salvation. You see, what hasn't changed is the need of humanity to know a Savior and a Lord and be transformed by Him. That still remains the same. So what I want to do is just give you a couple of three points. Only shift is one moment because she thought he may go on. So if we put him on now, he's got to finish by 8 o'clock. <laughs> And she's a great friend. Ola and Steve have become really close friends. Floss and I love them to bits. We go out and eat meals together in some good restaurants and in some not so good restaurants. But she's become a real friend. The redeemed Christian Church of God have become a real friend. You are special people to me. And what you bring of the gospel and worship and celebration and generosity, the church of Jesus Christ is all the better for it. Amen. I'm speaking here today. Next Saturday, I'm launching a brand new building of RCCG in Chippenham.
a remembrance as you went out that God was with you. You needed that daily remembrance. Why? Because what happens is this. Once you start to prosper and become successful, that's the most dangerous time to forget what God has done. Amen? Amen. Once we call it redemption and lift, you encounter Christ. He changes your life. He impacts on your family. He starts to prosper you financially. Then you forget. Because you're focused, because your shift can change. And you can read it all the way through the Old Testament that constantly God said, Why have you forgotten? Why have you forgotten again? Listen, I pray that you will never forget. <laughs> but you see, who should be in this room today that's not? Where are they? What has happened? The prodigals. The tasted. The experienced, but they're not here today. You see, my heart bleeds for them. It's great you're here, don't get me wrong. But I'm thinking, what jumps into a person's walk that takes them away from where they started? You heard it said that I'm launching something called Gospel Entrepreneurs. It's, it's been an amazing, exciting adventure. And one of the things about being an entrepreneur is you don't learn everything before you launch. You launch and then you learn. And he's been launched. The way that we do church is we can train you and equip you, but the way you're really going to do it is once you start. If you want to look at a ministry, if you want to look at a business, you can learn everything you can do. You can do the MBA, you can do the lot. But until you launch, you won't really learn. So I want to launch you into a brand new ministry. We can learn from the past and we're not going to forget the past. But our God is good in the future. And He needs us in the now. But his concern is that we transform the future. We are the people that transform the future. You see, this remembering comes right into the New Testament. And in the New Testament, Jesus laid down a remembrance moment. But you may not fully understand the Greek word of that remembering. Somebody was telling me recently that remembering in Greek is not the way it's written. Remember the Lord your God. Remember we take bread and we take wine. That's what we do in remembrance of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And if you've never experienced that kiss of forgiveness and the release of God's spirit today, his invitation to you is come home. Come and encounter my forgiveness and grace. But that word remember is actually in the English re remembering. In other words, you are now connected. You're a member. So you're reconciled, remembered to the body of Christ. You have reconnected to the body of Christ. So when you celebrate the bread and the wine, it's not just remembering, it's I remember to you. I'm now a member of you. You're a member of me. We're one body. Which is why when there's diversity in the body of Christ, it breaks God's heart because of what he did in the cross. Was to reconcile us to each 
The one who prospers us and blesses us. We forget. It's a terrible thing to forget. Because what happens is those memories actually shape your life. You see, in the Old Testament, when there was a significant battle won by the people of God, what did they do? They built something called a cairn. And what it was was a series of stones that they would put together and would stay there for year upon year upon year. So every generation to their children, to their next children, would come back and say, do you remember? We remember that we're part of that history. And we have an amazing history. And we have an amazing future. So I think the plan for you is those epiphany moments where you need to mark them. And maybe you need to build now you're going to become, become an heretic, an altar. Something in your room to remind you that God spoke to you then, God said something to you then. Because let me tell you what will happen, you will forget. And when it going gets tough, and it will get tough, when things happen, let me tell you something, you need to look back and say, no, God spoke to me then, right? and it's the same God that's with me today. Yes, amen. 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 So what do you need to build in your life on this 20th anniversary? What do you need to go away from today and think of the last 20 years, those epiphany moments? It could have been a failure. It's some of the hardest lessons we learn in the Bible. It challenges you. We were having dinner with some friends last night. Very successful man. But in a matter of two hours, he was struck down in the heart. Mm -hmm. But he lived. But he changed his life. And he realized that his spirituality was not strong enough to go through what he was walking through. So he started to read people like Henry now. He started to read some of the church fathers. And he discovered a hunger for the Spirit to feed his soul. And he pushed him into God. He also said, I reflected back to those moments in worship. I reflected back to those moments when God spoke I reflected back. Because that gave me confidence to step into the future. Amen? Amen. So, in conclusion, at it's 8 o'clock, if I have to finish now, I could burn in hell forever. <laughs> Let me say, what we are going to do, I'll be inviting a small pastor to the board to be the to the Lord for us. No sister, I shall give you to me.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray that in this city, this town, God, we are ready now, God, the new guys gather together. Lord, we are anointing with speak for them. Amen. People will see something in their life to bring them closer to Christ. Amen. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. For all that you are doing. Yes, Father. For what you are about to do. Mm. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Shall we share the grace together in fellowship? In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord of the Lord. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Just look at the person sitting next to you and say, Congratulations. Just share. God bless you.